<clears throat> Boy, that tastes good. You know, just like there are seasons of the soul, seasons in life where you go through summer, spring, winter, fall, or maybe you live in an area of the country that your summer is a lot like your spring, or your spring is a lot like your, there's just summer and fall, or summer and winter, or like your winter is always summer, <laughs> or something. So too, in your relationship with God, God doesn't say he's going to explain to you everything that he's doing. He never said that you will know everything. As a matter of fact, if you really read it closely, he reserves unto himself knowledge that he didn't even tell his son. So don't be surprised if at times you may not understand completely what's going on. Or there may be more in your life than God has revealed to you, but that he's only shown you a small portion of what he wants you to know today. Because there's always more to God that meets the eye, so to speak, and that he's greater than we are. I know in my own life, the last few days I've been feeling kind of unsettled as though something just isn't quite right, you know, and I, I've prayed about it, I've talked to God about it, haven't gotten a clear answer, you know, God hasn't said, this is what's wrong in your life. I mean, there's some things that are obviously wrong that I've been working on for a long time. <laughs> but sometimes God works with you anyways. So, I've been working on those, you know, and so you kind of go, okay. But there's been like, doing these videos, I kind of went in this one direction, like with Facebook, I thought, well, okay, I'll try this, and it doesn't seem like much of a response, so now I'm going to go back to doing the other, but incorporate both, you know, and see where God blesses. Because you see, it's not just always hearing God, sometimes it's a matter of how you feel about something, like if it just doesn't seem right. My wife's used to this, is that, you know, if we go out on a picnic, say, or some planned expedition that we decided to go long distance and suddenly I go you know it just seems unreasonable there's something going on here you know the the car doesn't start and then you know kind of the wife seems a little uncomfortable and then we get into kind of a disagreement and then I realize well why are we disagreeing this is stupid you know what, what's going on so then I kind of keep it quiet and inside my spirit I pray and I ask God okay Lord what's really going on this is unreasonable. Is she feeling uncomfortable? Am I uncomfortable? What's, what's up? <clears throat> then we keep going and something else seems to be like just not quite right. We take a wrong direction. So then I kind of go, you know, honey, I don't feel right about this. I just feel like we're doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. So then I turn around and I go home. Well, at first, that caused great, <laughs> as you can imagine, frustration and aggravation with my wife because she didn't understand a clue what I was talking about. She didn't have any idea except to think that, oh, I'm being kind of weird, or I'm being selfish, or I really didn't want to go in the first place. And you know how those go. But gradually in time, she saw that she could see the same thing happening. She would go, you know, he was right. You know, and over the years, she began to recognize the same thing in herself, that somehow something's not right. And that once we stopped doing it, everything went back to being right again. That it was just not going together quite like it should. And then sometimes God's even revealed to us like, you know, some obvious thing like, you know, neighborhood blew up or something, or there were shootings in the neighborhood or some other crazy thing, you know, that was just a good idea. Or we went home and then we got a phone call from a family member or whatever it may be. But there's always been something that confirmed it after the fact. Sometimes God doesn't tell you directly, but he'll tell you indirectly what he wants you to do. Sometimes, even though you may have a direct communication with him, he wants you to exercise your faith, or he wants to have you trust what he's given you to go forward in a direction that maybe he wants you to pull back from, because something's not quite right, and then maybe later you go forward. I know we've done that at times and then we wound up going anyways because we came back home and figured out we forgot something or whatever it may be. But the choice is yours to go through your day either heeding the word that God gives you or ignoring it in 
developing a personal conversation with God through your day or just going in the morning and then running out on your way. But God is alive and he wants to live with us and he wants to conform us so that we would be alive with him, so that we would be yielded to him, so that we would begin to walk with him throughout our day, so we would be knowledgeable of him, not in a weird way, not like, ooh, I got goosebumps, ooh, I see, you know, angels coming, you know, and they're going to deliver me, but just in some normal way, like, yeah, this doesn't seem right, and you use it as spiritual sense in the place of common sense, because sometimes common sense is to trust your spiritual sense. In daily life today, Thou shalt make a plate of pure gold and grave upon it, like the engravings of a signet, holiness to the Lord. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and before all the people I will be glorified. This is the law of the house. Upon the top of the mountain, the whole limit thereof, round about, shall be most holy. Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. For their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth, seeing that we have a, high, a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Sometimes for me, that's what I really need is just help. I just go, Lord, you know, I don't know what's going on, if it's something spiritual in heaven or if it's something physical on earth or something in me. But God help me. And that's all you need to do. Sometimes it's not about you, but it's about the things that are going on, maybe in heaven or in the world or in the spiritual dimension that we can't see, even though some people claim to know all about the spiritual dimension. Trust the Lord, he'll let you know. My cup runneth over. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lions are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. Whether the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Godliness with contentment is great gain. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. A lot of what we do sometimes when we are discontent or discomfited or somehow uncomfortable is trying to do too much and go too far when the Lord wants us to be content in what we're doing the way we are, where we are, as we are. So today, don't go too far because Sometimes it's a matter of just being faithful in what you're doing today as you're walking with him in your way, in a simple, humble, and holy way. Because God is making you holy even as he is holy.